Hey, you guys ever use that Thunderdome, or do you just put it up for decoration? Uh, you mean the Blood Dome? Save it for the Semantics Dome, E.B. White. Ooh, burn. Episode 2 takes place primarily in a diesel-powered vehicular field of death and nihilism. Morty, shoot the Mohawk guy! They all have Mohawks! It was probably my favorite episode to work on because the cars themselves could have so much character with spikes and bones and other kind of like fun post-apocalyptic accoutrement. Uh. <laughs> that was a heavy episode. There was like a, a set of bleachers around the Thunderdome. There must have been like 80 characters just in that one shot. I like every character to be different to make my life harder, so if you look in the backgrounds of these scenes, you will see a different person in every seat. Assume that this is a world where it went down in the 90s, and now this is like the result of it. Like uh, 90s punkers and stuff like that. And then, of course, like just like in Mad Max, where there's a little hint of it, we like really played up the BDSM gear. We would do things where like someone's wearing a gas mask, but then there's like a tube that goes to their crotch or something. I mean, obviously, there's an S&M influence in the characters in the post-apocalyptic world, that's what it's all about, man. You're gonna be wearing masks as spikes and chains and exposed muscles and things tied around their body parts. You go back to the primal when it's post-apocalypse. Sex and violence and how they intertwine. Oh, the Smith family, minus the dad. How long have you all been eating poop? We have never eaten poop. I mean, me neither. Rick and Morty. All new episodes begin Sunday, July 30th at 1130. Hey, YouTubers, we're getting new Rick and Morty next Sunday night. It's going to be awesome. Episode two. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll be doing videos all season long. The episode two, obviously, as you can see, is going to be that Mad Max Fury Road episode called Rick Mancing the Stone. They actually do go after a stone in the episode, but the title is just a reference to Romancing the Stone, the Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner movie from way back in the 80s. But they actually screened the episode at Comic-Con, so let me know if you are in that Comic-Con crowd. There are about 4,000 people sitting here. There were about another 4,000 people that they said that they had to turn away. So it was nuts. They had a great Comic-Con panel. Theirs was happening at the same time as Game of Thrones, but it always happens that way. Anything that you love will have its Comic-Con panel at the same time as something else on the other side of the convention center has its Comic-Con panel. Everything that becomes canon is canon, you know? Like, if it's on screen in the show, then we take it as seriously as, as, as everybody watching the show. Uh, season uh, three opener, we see a glimpse of Rick's past, oh, which is kind of a trick for the, uh, you know, Empire. But is any of that true, or did Rick really meet a, you know, a, a Rick who has a Mad Max shoulder? I no, 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 no. He wants to know if, if the backstory was, if there's yeah. any, any truth in that backstory. Oh, 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 it, 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 that's one of those things. Like, it, 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 if you were... It, here, I got it, I got it. If, if, if you were to fabricate a fake memory, would you start from scratch, blank page, complete bullshit, or would you maybe pull from some real things that might have happened, make some edits, some tweaks? You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to Photoshop somebody... That's like at a convention, and they're going, yeah, yeah. Then you're gonna put two dicks in their hands, like, <laughs> like there's some stuff that you're gonna use from reality to make that happen. How cool is that? They actually said that Rick's fake backstory in episode one is part true, so you can take that and run with it. But they said that they basically tried not to step on the canon that they set up in episodes so that if fans want to carry that forward, they don't trample on it by saying that it's not real. They really enjoy all the theory crafting that people do. But if you guys do want me to upload the rest of the Comic-Con panel, let me know and I'll do that in the next couple days. But the episode itself just picks up where episode one left off. It's like the Smith family trying to get used to life without Jerry. He's moving out. You start to see what the dynamic is going to be like while he's not living with them. And then Rick needs to get a stone. So they go to this alternate Earth. So this is happening in present day, like this post-apocalyptic future. Remember that as a show, Rick and Morty doesn't mess with time travel. They only travel to present day on other Earths. So that's why they explained that something really bad happened on this Earth in the 90s. And now they're all wearing BDSM gear and acting like Mad Max. 
They have a version of Immortan Joe from Fury Road. Summer winds up killing one of them while they're trying to escape. So by the rules of the apocalypse, they invite her to join their scavengers group. So Summer is hardcore in this episode. This is from later in the episode when they're still trying to steal that glowing stone. He injects Morty with DNA from one of their big gladiators. So that's why Morty's arm looks like it's super big. The arm itself starts to take over Morty, Purge and all style, and he just beats the shit out of everybody else in Thunderdome. But he starts to understand why everybody's so crazy in this world. Summer winds up falling in love with their version of Immortan Joe. The metaphor of the episode through Morty's giant arm in Summer is letting go. So it's like you let go of Jerry, their life is changing. So that's like the big theme of the episode, but they do it using all this Mad Max stuff. Then once they convey that really nice metaphor, Rick goes full Rick on their society and messes the entire planet up, completely changing everything so that all that Morty and Summer want to do is just go home. So that's their way of sort of resetting things back to base. Like, how do we get Summer away from this crazy dude? They all learn they need to be strong in this new life and they sort of settle down a little bit. But it does seem like there's more of a serialization to the episodes than there has been in the past. Like you have the galactic government in the early seasons, but now we're like directly picking up with the events of the previous episode. So it's not completely serialized. You could still watch them out of order, but I think it'll just make it a little bit more fun when you start binging this after the season is over and you rewatch the episodes. But either way, the good news is that the TV Guide is listing that Episode 2 is going to drop on Sunday instead of them just re-airing Episode 1. Although they might rerun it before Episode 2 airs. Either way, completely new episode. It's going to be awesome. What will happen is, is my Rick and Morty videos, because Game of Thrones is on Sunday nights and so much of my time is dedicated to that, most of my Rick and Morty stuff will post early Monday morning until Game of Thrones is over. There are only five more episodes of Game of Thrones. There's 10 episodes of Rick and Morty this season. So once Game of Thrones is over, then Rick and Morty will just dominate my Sundays. But leave all your requests for bonus videos in the comments below. While you wait for everything, you can click here to rewatch that season three trailer, and you can click here for that next Game of Thrones trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.